Um, okay, so I guess moving now from the species-specific approach that Anissa has just told us about to um, how we manage, how we strategically manage a group of invasive species. So I'll be telling, on behalf of the National Cactus Working Group, I'll be telling you a bit about how we are developing a national strategy for cactus management. So, for those who aren't aware, cactus species are among South Africa's worst and most widespread invaders. There are currently 34 species that are known to be naturalized or invasive in South Africa. And many of these can, well, they can and do have serious economic and ecological impacts. And, and if you have a look at these photos, you can start to get an idea of why a lot of these species form these large, really dense, really spiny infestations that can completely exclude all native vegetation, native wildlife, um, livestock, and can cause um, injury to small livestock and other animals, and just generally reduces the productivity of, um, of land. So, some of the key challenges with the Cactaceae, especially that there are a lot of potentially invasive species within this large and diverse family of about 1,400 species. And they're quite popular ornamental plants in South Africa. Um, depending on who you speak to, there's anywhere between 200 and 1,200 species that have been introduced to the country. Um, so this is a, a large trade and it's somewhat unregulated. You can get speed, uh, you can get buy cactus at um, flea markets, you can get it at your local gardening club or even at your local supermarket. And because there's such a there's a lot of taxonomic confusion within the group, not just in South Africa but internationally. And so a lot of the importers and sellers aren't um, aren't exactly aware of what species they're dealing with. So that's why when you go to a nursery, you'll often find species that are sold under a general label such as mixed cactus or um, succulent plants. To deal with these challenges and some others, the Cactus Working Group was formed last year. And we're quite a large group now, nearly 30 members. And we've got quite a nice diversity of expertise within the group. Um, we've got the cactus biocontrol expert, which is Hildegard from the ARC. We've also got Leslie Henderson, who managed to avoid the camera. <laughs> but she picks up all the new naturalizations, the new uh, naturalized cacti. We've then got the management implementers, policy implementers, researchers, and representatives from the Nurseries Partnership Program. The roles of the Cactus Working Group is firstly <coughs> to develop this national strategy for cactus management. And then within that framework, to make sure that all the work that's done on, on Cactaceae is coordinated nationally, to ensure that we are using and improving best practice control methods, uh, to make sure that we are communicating effectively amongst the stakeholders and with the public, to draw up a list of undesirable cactus species, and make sure that this is regularly um, communicated to nurseries that are trading in cactus species, and then to compile and maintain a detailed national database of invasive cacti. Uh, just a bit about the scope of the strategy and why we decided to combine cactaceae into a single strategy is just because the family is so nice and neatly defined taxonomically and functionally and they have shared management requirements. So what we're hoping to develop is a comprehensive strategy that addresses all aspects of cactus management. <coughs> Sorry. So we've drawn quite a lot from the national uh, strategy for cases that Brian and Vulcan and colleagues developed in 2011. 
um, that Vernon nicely um, explained to us this morning. The overall, oh, overall goal, so what we want to see the strategy achieving in the long run, is firstly that no new cactus species are introduced to South Africa without full risk assessment. Um, that new instances of naturalization are detected early and eradicated, that widespread species are contained and their impacts are minimized, that research and development is constantly improving our understanding of cactus invasions and how best to manage these, and that the public is made aware of the threats that cactus pose, um, pose and how we are actively managing these. The strategy has four main objectives. Um, I'll go through each one of them separately, but just so you can see, the first one is for uh, deals with prevention, then eradication, managing existing species, and research and capacity building. So the first strategic objective is preventing new introductions to the country. So here we want to develop, firstly develop a pre-border risk assessment <coughs> protocol that is specific for specific to the cactus. <coughs> then we want to make sure that car and neighbor legislation is updated to include all invasive species. Um, currently only about half of the species that are naturalized or invasive are listed on these two, uh, um, under these regulations. And then to make sure that there are systems in place to regulate cactus imports. Second objective is eradication of species with limited distribution. So firstly, we need to make sure that there's sufficient effective surveillance nationally to detect new naturalizations early so we can eradicate them. So here we need to identify and monitor high-risk pathways and points of likely introductions to new cactus species. Then we want to have an inventory of all cactus species that have been introduced to the country and be able to identify and monitor those that are high risk of becoming invasive. Um, okay, then once we've identified species that are um, suitable candidates for eradication, we need to make sure that these have species-specific management plans implemented. And I think we might hear a bit about that um, from Trevor Shaburi later. And I actually put this photo in because I was getting tired of the text, but it, <laughs> but it highlights another important aspect of the strategy, and that is really knowing what species are being traded um, <coughs> and making sure that there are no um, invasive species being traded. So if you have a look, have a look in, in the background there, behind those other weird ones, um, that's a punch of microdasis. Uh, with, with some fake flowers stuck on this. But it, we know that a Punta Macrodas is an invasive species. Um, it's not listed on CARA, and it's actually quite widely um, sold in nurseries and at flea markets around the country. So it's something that we really need to tackle, making sure that invasive species are not traded. Okay, then the third strategic objective is managing existing species effectively. So here we need to implement integrated management plans for these species. That's using the available biocontrol agents, herbicides, and mechanical control where, where necessary to reduce the density and the extent of invasive populations. Uh, then we need to make sure that the, these um, infestations are contained and that there's no further spread. And to prioritize our management efforts spatially so we are um, focusing our resources where they are needed the most. And then there's a couple of cactus species that do have um, some commercial benefits, such as fruit crops and animal fodder. We need to make sure that these benefits are, are retained in a sustainable way. The last objective is quite broad. It's improving knowledge and capacity for management. Um, so here we need to prioritize, make sure that 
research is prioritized that's going to inform and improve the way we manage um, invasive cacti. We need to then collate and maintain a national database of invasive cactus species. We need to make sure that we are continually um, developing and improving our best practice management um, options. And then to make sure that the public is made aware of cactus threats um, and how we are managing these through education and awareness campaigns. Okay, this is just to give you a general idea of the status of the <coughs> species that are known to be naturalized and invasive currently. I tried to put it on that fun Vulcan matrix that really showed, but it, it didn't fit. So I'll just explain it quickly. We know, I said earlier, we're not quite sure how many species have actually been introduced to the country, but we should probably assume that it's more than we think. Um, then these species, so these species here are the ones that are currently being assessed as potential eradication targets, but it's more than likely that a lot of those are already far too widespread. So those ones over there are the ones that are already widespread and need to be managed. And then I've separated these ones out at the bottom here. Um, these are the ones that have some commercial um, benefits, so the, the dragon fruit and the pear, as examples. Yeah, so as I said, this is a work in progress. There's a few things we still need to sort out, such as making sure that there's an agency responsible for each action and the strategy, that we define time frames in which we are going to implement the strategy, and that we come up with some good metrics for effectively evaluating our progress. And we'd be very keen to get input and, and comments on this. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. Um, are there any comments or questions for me? Thanks. Um, the Biodiversity Act makes provision for invasive species management plans for certain areas, uh, particularly state owned areas and so on. Is there a provision for a um, leg legislating or gazetting a strategy for a group of species like this? Is that, is that the way you look at it? Um, the, <coughs> the regulation says there needs to be a national strategy for each listed species, so um, there needs to be a management strategy for, for listed, uh, each species that is listed under the, uh, the member act. So, um, and yet, we think that this might be a way of saying that all the cactaceae are covered by this uh, strategy or the acacias are covered by that strategy so you could say it's a list of species and it's got this strategy but I don't know whether that interpretation is going to say actually you need to have it's a little bit here and this is the national strategy for it um, but uh, the regulations do state that every listed species will have to have a strategy <coughs> Um, on Apuntia ficus and Gika, I'm not serious. You said those are two useful species. But I think on Apuntia ficus and Gika, it is now useful, but that's because we've got good biological control agents on it and it's keeping it at a, a level where we can utilize it and it's no longer a problem. With Hyder Sirius, we don't have any biocontrol agents on it, and I think Hyder Sirius is becoming a major problem. Um, and it is utilized for its fruits. But I think it should be in a sort of separate category. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I agree. And I think that, they, that probably at, in, in that case, um, sort of management would be comfort before. before Follow on from, from Ian's question with highly serious, it really should be, um, now that we're aware of its commercial value, it should be listed under NEM by NCAR as a category 2 plant, which means it will be permitted in demarcated areas with a permit, and outside of those, it should be regarded as a category 1 plant. That's actually how it should be dealt with. Mm -hmm. 